thing to do is to trim the fretboard down to the template. Now, the really tricky bit, as I found out, was getting the fretboard perfectly centered on the template. So I drew a center line on the back of the fretboard on masking tape. And then I line that up with the center line on the template, and then I clamped them together, and then I drilled a small hole, not just a couple of mil into the, the fretboard. So I could then use these drills bits as um, alignment posts, which then allow me to do the super glue masking tape trick to stick them together whilst keeping them perfectly aligned. This is my rig to trim the fretboard down to the template. So the template's mounted underneath the fretboard here. I've got a bearing cutter that will run along the template underneath. And I've got the maple either side for the router to run on. And that should give a nice clean cut. I've now finished trimming the neck down to the template. Well, I had to move the template, of course, because the template's for a 21 fret strat neck, and I'm using a 24 fret neck, so I had to move the template to line it up and route that, and then do the other side. But that's worked nicely, apart from a little bit of chip out I got just there, which I had to fill, and a bit of burning when I didn't move the router quite quickly enough there, but I'll just call it a flamed maple. And I've also put a bit of maple uh, to cover the mechanism of the truss rod so that when I now glue the fretboard on it doesn't um, gum up the works. And I was going to glue the fretboard on next but as we're having a cold spell and the glue needs to be above a certain temperature that's going to have to wait until it warms up a touch. So I think the next stage is to start uh, cutting the body. It's starting to look like a guitar. So while I wait for the weather to warm up before we can glue the fretboard on, I'm going to rough cut the bodies, no, the body wings. So I've got my strap template here. And I've got this lined up to make the most of the grain. And so the plan now is to rough cut the body. Now I'm going to do this on the jigsaw table, which doesn't like turning corners. So what I'm going to do, I've got a rather chunky 10mm drill bit here. And I'm going to drill holes at the point where I'm going to change direction. And that's going to then allow me to do straight lines connecting those pieces to uh, get the bulk off the body before I then uh, flush trim it down with the router. So that's the next step to do on the pillar drill. I was just about to start shaping the body when I realized I had an issue in that the template I'd used for the neck, I hadn't gone quite far enough down uh, to st then for the body template to take over. So what I've have to do is rig up this rather elaborate <laughs> set of bits of MDF to give me a straight line here, and I'm just going to take 7mm from there to there before this one can take over, but not go too far to avoid the risk of chip out here until the body's glued on to stop that happening. So yes, this has been an interesting afternoon. So I've marked out the shape of the wings on the maple and I'm now drilling holes um, at points where I can then use the jigsaw to do straight lines between them because the jigsaw cuts reasonably well in a straight line but it really doesn't like doing curves. And that's working nicely. So I'm halfway through cutting the body out. Cutting the straight lines to the holes works very well on the jigsaw, and then you can turn the corners in the holes, just like joining the dots. And there we have it. 
starting to look very guitar like. Yes, yeah, so as long as you keep downward pressure on the wood you're cutting in the jigsaw table, it cuts reasonably well. But yeah, still, get a bandsaw if you can. So it's really starting to look like a guitar now. The next stage is to glue the fretboard on. Now as we've trimmed the fretboard down to size before gluing it onto the neck, it is absolutely vital that we get it lined up perfectly. Uh, so I've got some cocktail sticks which are exactly 2mm thick which I'm going to, and I've got a, uh, a drill that is exactly the same size. I've drilled a very small hole in there and it's a perfect flush fit. So I'm going to do that through the third fret and the 19th fret, give or take. So the question now is how do we get the fretboard perfectly aligned onto the neck? And I'll show you how we do that next. So the way I've got these lined up is to use a clamp at either end with some MDF on either side, which is flat, to line the fretboard up perfectly with the uh, side of the neck. And then I'm going to drill a hole through the fret slot here and the fret slot there using these uh, little cocktail sticks. So then when I come to glue it on, I can just slot it down on that and it won't move at all. So the next thing is to drill those holes in the drill press. It's now the next day, so the glue should have all cured. So I'm going to take this off and see what happened. Have I glued the clamping core to it this time? And the answer is uh, no. It's not majorly. And it's looking quite good. So I've now cleaned up the glue from the edges of the fretboard and it's looking like it's worked very well. It's exactly where it wanted to be, and it seems to have got a nice glue seal all the way around. Um, because the fret board had warped slightly, I'm not sure whether it was just after it had been initially made or after I trimmed it down, but it had warped and it was rocking. But uh, the clamping core worked very nicely and applied even pressure, 
and it seems to be very well seated. And nice and resonant. So the next thing to do now is shape the back of the neck. So I'm going to use the faceting technique, uh, which is quite a common way to do it. So you have your center line down the middle, and you mark the first fret and you mark the twelfth fret. You do five mil either side of the center line at the first fret, and ten mil either side of the center line at the twelfth fret. You then mark a point two thirds of the way up uh, the neck here on both sides, and then you join those two lines. And then once you've done that, you then do another line there, uh, and then join the two lines. And once you've done that, you end up with pretty much the final shape fairly quickly. And so that's the next thing to do. Let's see how well that works.